Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be learning on the topic of organic chemistry 2 and our subtopic for today is the mode of cleaning of soap. So we did an introduction bit in the previous lesson when we saw how soaps are made in the lab, uh, manufactured in the lab. So today we are going to see how exactly soap is used uh, for cleaning. So soap uh, makes the water able to wet material more efficiently by lowering the surface tension and it helps in the emulsification of oil and grease. Actually the dirt that is usually on clothes is majorly oil and this oil can attract dirt particles or grease which attract dirt particles. So oil is a major part of the dirt particles that are in clothes. So soap molecules usually have two dissimilar ads. So we have the nonpolar ad and the polar ad. You remember we talked about how this diagram is drawn by different play, uh, different books. So this the R part which is the alkyl part is usually the nonpolar part. And we have the COONA which is polar because this dissociates in water to form a partially negative oxygen and sodium ions get into solution. So this is the polar part. Uh, so the hydrocarbon chain with a nonpolar, uh, which is nonpolar and has, and has no attraction for water and oil soluble. So the nonpolar part is the one that is oil soluble and then the polar part is the one that is attracted to the water. So when you put it, like you dissolve this in water and you're trying to wash, so the dirt which consists of oil, of course, and other grease substances, the oil is attracted to the nonpolar part and then the water in the basin is attracted to the polar part, the carboxylic end. So the carboxylic end is negatively charged in water. Remember we said because uh, it dissociates in water to form the carboxylic ion and sodium ion and they separate when they get into the solution. So let's look at actually how the steps usually occur when washing. So we have the hydrophilic part of the of the tail. This is the long hydrocarbon chain, as you said. This is the nonpolar part end, and we usually call it hydrophobic because it's not attracted to the water. And then we have the hydrophilic part, which is water loving. This is the part that is polar. You can see the negatively charged ox uh, carboxylic ion, and then the sodium ions gets into the water. So on adding soap into the oil water mixture, the following build up occurs. First of all, a molecule of soap adds up the hydrophilic and hydrophobic part. So the nonpolar end dissolves in the oil and then the polar end dissolves in the water. So when you're explaining your answers, especially when you have been asked to explain the cleaning action of soap, so the first thing you need to do is to identify that um, the soap contains uh, hydrophilic or um, the water loving part or the polar part and it's also made up of the nonpolar part which is hydrophobic. And then you go ahead and explain how these two different parts interact with the water and the oil particles in the basin. So the nonpolar end will dissolve in the oil and then the polar end will dissolve in the water or it will be attracted to the water. And when the mixture is agitated, um, when, when the mixture is agitated thoroughly or shaken, in the case of shaking is when you see in the washing machines, it's actually shaken by vibration, but agitation happens when it's hard washed. So the hydrocarbon chain dissolves in the grease so it's the one that dissolves in the grease while the carboxylate ion end of the soap uh, remain dissolved in water. So this is what happens. So you can see the sodium, um, the, the, the soap, the hydrocarbon part um, dissolves the, 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 
oil and then the hydroph hydrophilic part attract to the water molecules and each drop ends up with a large cloud of negative charges around it as you can see there is a drop that is forming around the oil so around it as the polar ends are negatively charged so consequently the oil drop drops repel each other as you can see hence preventing them from coalescing so because they are not able to attract each other because remember this they are of like poles so they are not going to attract each other they repel and remember because of this attraction they are forming a sort of a round cloud around the oil so this is what we refer to as a missile this is not how the wording of missile is. It's not a missile for bombing. So missile is formed in the process and then uh, the water soluble sodium heads on the surface of the droplets keep the droplets um, suspended in the water. So when um, the water is being rinsed, the water carries away those oil droplets. So this missile is the one that is removed when the rinsing occurs. So when you look at now hard water and soap, so calcium ions and magnesium ions are the ones that are responsible for water hardness. We discussed this uh, in the word salt, bases and acids in form 4. You can go back and check in details hard water. So the magnesium and calcium ions in solution are the ones that uh, react with the soap, that is sodium stearate and in turn they form an insoluble solid which is referred to as scum. So this is a solid of magnesium stearate and calcium stearate. So this is the equation for the reaction. You can see the soap with the sodium ion. You remember that is what we said, the structure of the soap. So there is an interchange of cations because when it gets into solution, the sodium ions dissociate. So we form calcium stearate and sodium ions. This calcium stearate is a white a precipitate and also magnesium stearate is a precipitate. So we have to use a lot of soap to get rid of all the calcium ions and magnesium ions in solution. So there's a lot of soap wastage. It takes a lot of time before lathering occurs when you are using soap with hard water. So the resultant scum is deposited on fabrics, giving them dull appearance. So hard water uh, is obviously advantageous to remove hardness. It is important to remove hardness before washing. So this is a sample question that was tested in an exam. So below is a simple representation of a soap molecule. So we have the polar head and the non-polar head. Using the structure above show how soap removes the oily smear from the fabric shown below. So we are just going to show the steps, but in diagrammatic way. So let's show how the attraction of the polar and the non-polar head. So we have the oil, the, the grease. We said the non-polar head of um, the, the soap attracts itself to the grease. So you need to show that in your diagram. So we will call this the soap. You can go ahead and show the uh, polar and non-polar. And then continuous agitation dislodges this uh, oil from the fabric. So we end up having um, the oil surround being surrounded by the non-polar ends. So it uh, concentrates or surrounds the oil and it forms a missile as you can see. And remember we say they do they repel each other because of the negatively uh, negative polar end it can't attract each other so they're always repelling each other so this is the oil so rinsing removes this missile and in the process the cloth is washed well so this is how um the cleaning action occurs but in this case you are just told to to show 
you are not told to explain you are supposed to use diagrams but there are some cases also you can be told to explain uh, the cleaning action of soap so i hope you have been able to understand you can go back to the video in a place where you didn't understand more questions will be posted in the uh, app make sure you can go and check and practice on how to answer those questions so see you in the next lesson